like I said, uh, well, about the whole religion and Christian thing, like I said, I, I, I never came to Alexis and said I was Joel Osteen's second becoming. So you can't, you're going to expect so much from me. I'm a believer. I have faith. And she would have asked me to go to, I, I didn't like that line that Tommy said when he was like, oh, you got to deal with this every Sunday. That's a lie. If Alexis wanted to go to church every Sunday, I would go to church every Sunday. If she wanted to pray over every meal, I would pray with my woman over every meal. I have no problem doing that. Um, so that's a lie. I, I've been to church. I have nothing against it. Um, I, like I said, I had a bad experience at the church I was at, but I was open to going to others and, and things of that nature. Hello everyone and welcome back to Everyday Husband Quotes, the channel for marriage advice, marriage entertainment, and everything else, marriage. Hey, hey guys, and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Prayer does help. It, I, it does help. And I, I was the first person on there saying that part of that conversation was prayer has worked has, has worked for a lot of people. I'm not telling them don't do that first or pray or manifest your destiny or pray for your mate or things of that nature. It's just people are different. I'm, I know women that say, hey, I pray every day for a husband. I'm not worried about it. God's going to deliver me my husband and because I'm praying for it. And I say, that works for a lot of people. Keep doing that. I'm the type of person, though, that's going to throw on a, a blazer and a shirt and take my butt out somewhere and try to find me a woman to be my wife. And then when I find her, I'm going to pray and thank God and say, thank you, God, for looking out. Uh, my actions have, you know, and your actions together have brought me my mate. So that's just how I feel about that. The conversation went horrible <laughs> but for three hours straight. So when she was in there talking to the Tommy and them and they talking about religion and stuff, I'm, I'm, I, I got confused when I'm watching it on the screen because I'm like, we talked for three hours the night before. We already basically made a decision that we were kind of done. You know what I mean? Like, what's like, why is it you got to decide and you now you, you doing your little tear, you know, perfect tear moment, like right at the time. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, we had three hour conversation. <laughs> We ironed out everything, you know what I mean? Like for three hours straight and you acting like we weren't over after that. Like, you know what I mean? It was nothing really else to talk about. We we covered everything. And she basically said, and this is what I take accountability for. I had two dates with her. AJ had eight dates with her. She said, AJ makes her feel good. You know what I mean? He's touchy feely, you know, moving around, things like that. A lot affectionate, charming. But he felt a lot comfortable doing that because he'd been around her a lot more. And I didn't feel comfortable doing a lot of side dates with Alexis because she got a kid. She was working. Her schedule was so busy. Every time I talked to her at the end of the night, she could sound exhausted. Like, man, like, you know, it's a long day. So I didn't want her to get a babysitter just to take her out to lunch or anything like that. I figured, like, the time to spend with her would be when all this is done off camera, when you can meet the kid and get into the household and b play your role, you know, as a single dad, you know what I mean, as a stepdad and, and, and build with it. So I wasn't really pressing her for time, but she needed that affection. She needed that, um, you know, what he was giving her, you know, because he had more time with her. And uh, I probably should have, uh, instead of thinking so long term, I should have thought a little short term and said, Hey, you know, maybe I need to get some side dates with her. Maybe I need to get some more FaceTime with her and um, try to add a little more romance um, to the situation, you know, um, because I'm a, I'm very naturally affectionate guy. Um, I enjoy doing this and uh, uh, doing that. That's one of my love language. My love language is touch. So when she was telling me I, she wasn't getting that from me, I was like, I'm, that's what I do the best. But then I had to understand that, you know, we ain't spent a lot of time with each other face to face. So I take accountability for that. Um, but that's the first time I heard her mention it was on that phone conversation. And that was a three hour conversation. So after that, um, I was pretty much done. I did go on a date that night uh, because they kind of cliffhangered the episode. I ain't going to tell you who until my next live uh, next week. So I'm going to leave y'all with that. Um, like I said, I didn't understand the whole 
So let's go back to let's go to the deliberation. So when she's let's go to the dinner date. Let's go with the date where she's kind of um, telling me now. That's kind of like an elimination um, date, you know, what they say, you know, where they even tell you if you're going to uh, be eliminated or if you need to work on stuff. So when I came in there, I kind of knew what that was already because it was about 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm tired. I just had a three hour conversation with her the night before. I just found out about the kiss. All this has been dropped on me in one day. I had no water, no heat, no, because of the snowstorm for five days. Uh, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on because I ain't heard from her really a lot that whole week. And I'm just not in a good mood when I go in there, but I'm ready to get over with. You know, I'm ready to leave. And um, she did what she kind of did right there. She started attacking my religion again. And I'm like, why are you attacking me on, you, you know what I mean? Like you even a believer or you're not a believer. And if you go to church, great. If you find you, uh, the word in a different way, that's fine. You know, I, you know, I'm a believer. I'm a doer. I have a huge track record for giving in this city. Um, I'm okay where I where I'm at spiritually. Um, can I be better? Yes. You can always be better at, at anything. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm improving in everything every day. But the fact that you know that she thought that she could attack me on that, and trust me, Alexis does everything I do is nothing like, you know what I mean? We, we saw the clips earlier and stuff like that. She, you know, sexual, everything like that. We do the same thing. So it was no way to judge me that by her actions, your actions don't are not better than mine when it comes to faith. Yes. You may pray a little more maybe, but I'm talking about what we do, uh, within our faith and religion. It's exactly the same. And, what me and AJ does, like, you know what I mean? Because my religion is about as, as weird, about 90% of the country is that, right? So it's the same as AJ's too. And yeah, she didn't question AJ on, on his religion. They didn't even have a talk about it. But like I said, just say that you're attracted to AJ. Don't don't batter me on my religion in front of my mom. And, you know, people who have raised me, you know, my grandmother raised me in the church. You know what I mean? Don't, don't. Don't shit on my family. You know what I mean? I, I thought that was, I understand they're trying to make a narrative, you know what I mean? Because their audience, they, you know, they try to push buttons and that's just TV. But I just thought, you know, it, it pissed me off a little bit. So now she's shooting that and that pissed me off. So what I did was I switched the conversation back to what it really was supposed to be about. And that's AJ. And they edited all that out. They cut it all out. So when... I, I'm, when I'm looking at her and I'm and I'm talking and they're clipping it and they make it seem like I'm just saying kind of kind of sending things to her, I'm not. We're having a conversation about AJ. I'm telling her, hey, you know, basically, Miss Spiritual Girl, do you think it was okay to kiss two guys within a 24-hour period? Or you know, and I'm a, I'm asking her, do you think it's okay um, for you to you know have you know feelings for another guy and not contact me for 11 days about it? And I'm bringing up the AJ thing and everything about it. And I'm letting her know, like, AJ wasn't even checking for you two weeks ago and things of that nature. But a week before elimination, he pours it thick on you. And you don't think that's because he might think he's probably about to get eliminated. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm letting her know, like, you know, I don't know how interested 100% he is, you know. So that was what the conversation was. It was edited. It was chopped off to make it seem like I was being disrespectful or yelling at her. I wasn't. Uh, when I said that line that uh, I don't need you, the conversation before that was about, you know, um, Alexis had been used in the past from guys who, because of her TV show, that wanted to be on her TV show for marketing purposes and things of that nature. And she said something to that, the direct. And I was like, I don't need you for that. You know, basically I don't need you for that. Like I, I'm not one of those lames. Don't compare me to anybody like that. Like, and that's why I said that. Like, I don't need you. I don't need you that for that. I got defensive because she was comparing me to lanes basically in the past that had used her in, in that situation. And I was I was there to bring stuff to the table. I wasn't there to take anything away. That, that's not why I was dating her in the first place. Um, so I was upset about that. Uh, and the part when I was like, um, I thought you were smart. 
I, we were talking about AJ then. So I was like, I thought you were smarter than this. Uh, then, the, you know, did not see this guy just come out of nowhere and starts to, you know, charm you up right before elimination because the guys we talked, AJ thought he was going to be the guy going home because he was like, if Kyra goes with Jason, nobody really has me as their number one. And, you know, that was kind of true. But I have no problems with AJ. He did what he was supposed to do. You know, Wolves recognized the Wolves. I love that guy. Go get it. You know what I mean? If, if any guy could take my girl away from me that easily, she was never mine to begin with. And I'll, I'll buy that man a drink, shake his hand, and, and just move on. That's just how I am. Um, this is still a competition. Everybody's still dating everybody. Me and Alexis, at the end of the day, really only been on two dates. Uh, I had a long-term vision and a long-term plan in my head. That's why I picked her. Uh, but I was still dating other people. I wasn't 100% sure with her. I was having some red flags that was coming up that I had to deal with with her too. And what I wasn't going to do is I wasn't going to hold her hand and walk to the finish line and act like everything was okay. I wasn't even going to leave in a committed, solid relationship or I was gonna leave single where I could find a committed, solid relationship. It wasn't gonna be no, y'all gonna asking me where's Alexis at at the, you know, two months from now, like where's Alexis? And we're not together. We don't make it past two days after we start filming because we didn't have nothing solid. We were just trying to make it to the end for our appearances. That wasn't me. I hated that. I didn't want to be there anyway. I didn't, I hated filming. I don't like being there in the first place. So I damn sure wasn't about to fake it till I make it to make it to the end with anybody. So that was off limits. Um, I know a lot of people talk about the Cassantium thing and uh, me and Cassantium was, was, was talking and close, but you gotta understand, Cassantium had a wall up. I was slowly getting it down. And if I would've got it down and saw, you know, what I had there, uh, and if it was something there, then I would have pursued it. But Cassandra never offered me a relationship. She never offered me um, a bunch of substance. You know I mean, we weren't there yet. You know, she needed more time. She's a very slow roller. And it wasn't going to happen within the time frame that we had in this show. We only get to film, you know, four and a half weeks. You know what I mean? So it wasn't going to get done in, in between then. Um... If you saw her live, some of the stuff she was saying was very correct. Um, I didn't think she got a real fair shake. Um, uh, it was true that, you know, people were telling me certain things about her that wasn't really true. But um, she's a good girl. We're friends. Um, but yeah, at that point in time where I had to make a decision, she had a wall up and she didn't offer me a lot of... Um, reassurance that I was gonna get a relationship out of, of dating her, you know what I mean? But nah, I, I see you just saying, uh, Chris, I did like Alexis. I can't, you can't say that I didn't like her. Uh, don't say I picked it who I didn't like. I liked her. Uh, you gotta understand, she was giving me her representatives and her representative, I would date again. The girl I first met that I was talking to on the phone with and the way how nice she was and how endearing and things of that nature and the way she was treating me, I would date that woman again. That woman was phenomenal. Um, that woman was telling me everything I wanted to hear on a daily basis. Yes, Chris, she's not my type, but she's she didn't have to be my type. I have many different types. Like I said, uh, I was, I, you know what I mean? I wasn't 100% attracted to Alexis at first, like I said, but she grew on me. She's a pretty girl. Um, I like a little more curvier girl. Yes, I usually do, but she was growing on me. To me, it was more, uh, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, looks is up there, but it ain't everything. It ain't 100%. Like, as long as she's a good-looking woman, which she is, long as she you're attracted to her and you can you know be sexually attracted to her then what does it really matter you know we all gonna get old we all are not gonna keep our look we all ain't gonna you know what i mean 
she was good enough for me. I, I, I was attracted to her. So um, that, that's just the reality of the situation. Yes, I'm attracted. I was attracted to Chris, too. Hey, Chris, Chris Anthem, you're very beautiful. I see you there. But I was attracted to Alexis. I'm not going to lie about it. I, and I, like I said, I don't know why um, Chris Anthem is leaving and why you even upset. Like I said, I, I tried to date Chris Anthem. During the show, after the show, whenever I got a chance, I tried to get to know her, tried to break down the wall, still tried to date her. Uh, even when I see her, um, I, I, I try, you know, to be nice and cordial and things of that nature. So uh, I like Chris, Chris Anthem. She's cool. That's my G. Uh, I think he saw my effort. So uh, if she's mad that uh, I picked uh, Alexis first, then that's fine. But I didn't get rid of Cassantium. You got to understand. I fought for Cassantium to stay on the board. Um, I wasn't the one in that vote that said she needed to go. Trust me, I wanted her to stay another couple weeks so I could figure out which, which woman, you know, to go further with. I didn't know. Uh, so if he, I didn't want Cassandra to leave at all. When Cassandra left, I called her probably about five minutes after she got eliminated. Was like, I wasn't ready to make a decision yet. I didn't make a decision. Um, I still want to talk. I still want to date. And I think we we went on a few dates after that. Still, but um, yeah. Like my sister said, she's in here now, and uh, she said there's a difference between saying. Someone ain't your type versus not liking them. And I did like her. And I get it because Anthony, like Odessa says, she's frustrated. I get it. But you got to understand, I don't care about dating on the show. I did not care about that at all. I cared about dating on outside of the show was more important to me. Who cares about the TV? I didn't care about the TV. So... Me battling 10 guys for a girl was one thing, but what's going to happen when I get back into Houston and now there's 2 million guys that want that girl or, you know, or she has the option of millions of men and I have options of a lot of women. Like, what do we do then? Could we still make it as a couple in the real world? Not with the cameras, not uh, closed in with COVID, not with all these restrictions and stuff on us. Can we make it as a real couple in the real world because dating in the real world was way different than dating on camera dating on camera somebody has a camera in your face you got to know how to act and move with the cameras and everything you got people telling you this and that um you know i didn't have an agenda to, to be on tv i never wanted that i wanted a relationship so if the girl just wanted to be on tv longer you know what i mean i wasn't the right fit for her you know, if she wanted to just make it to the end, I'm not the right fit for you. I don't care. I don't, I didn't care if I was the first guy eliminated. I didn't, I didn't want to, it was a lot of work being on there. I didn't want to be on there a lot, too much longer, but I did want my relationship on, if I did get a relationship on camera, I wanted it to transfer to my life off camera. And that's why I did a lot of off dates that I paid for myself. We weren't supposed to do it. I got in trouble for it, but I've took every girl that I talked to, I took on a date or uh, off camera um, that I paid for myself to try to see if she moved different on camera than off camera. Just to kind of get an understanding of can this continue once the show is over? And I think we saw a lot of in this show, we see a lot of people don't make it past the reunion because the cameras are even going to. Uh, hold your, your relationship tight so when you're done filming, your relationship's gonna soar because they were holding you back or the cameras were holding you together a lot of times. And then you see those couples break up right after. Um, I wanted to be the one that, you know, kept my relationship. So, you know, I, to me, dating on camera was the same thing as dating off camera. So let's take a for a second, for, for example. If I was talking to her on camera, she should treat, and she uh, got eliminated. Our relationship should be still to be the same off camera. I don't know why, you know, being on TV or not should have made a difference. And I guess it did. But, you know, if I would have got eliminated and Cassandra would have called me and was like, you know, I'm interested, I still want to date, I would have kept dating her exactly the same. You know what I mean? Because I was interested in her personally. 
So, you know, I kept seeing some differences with some women of, you know, on camera and off camera dating. And um, I was kind of uneasy with that sometimes. So that's just part of the process. I was new to it. I was new to dating on television. I did a lot of work before I uh, got on this show. I didn't date two months prior to the show. I told myself I was gonna come in here and date with a tent. I told myself I was gonna, I was on ready to love, not ready to date. I was already a pretty good dater. I wanted to date with a tent and see if I could turn this into a long-term relationship. And I gave my all, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I was serious. Um, I gave it I gave it all I got. I was interested in Alexis. I was interested in Cassanthium. I was interested in Amber. Um, and I, I tried to treat them all. They all knew about each other. And I, I, I tried to find who was perfect for me. And you know what I mean? It, it didn't work. It was, it was heartbreaking and sad for me. And this is the reason why. At one point in, in this journey, I thought I had struck gold. I thought I had... I'm talking to, you know, my top three women. And I thought they were three of the best women I've ever met in my life at this point. I'm like, man, y'all can just kick me off and just give me these three numbers and I can do the rest of my own. But you don't know everybody's agenda. You don't know what's going on. There's television, there's production, there's editing, there's all this stuff's going on behind the scenes. You're not getting the information you want. And, and honestly, I was naive in a lot of different directions. And I end up I, looking like Boo Boo the Fool because of it. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have dated for TV and not really dated with such a long-term intent. But I was doing with what they told us to do. They said, hey, you need to date for real and really try to find a mate. But this is a TV show, almost like a game show. Uh, and even if you're not willing to play the game, which I wasn't, they're gonna play, the game's gonna play out for you regardless. So I thought I had these great choices. These are still great, amazing women, but at the time and what they were looking for, what I was looking for, it just didn't match up. Um, uh, I said, why I didn't go for Kyra? I didn't go for Kyra because me and Kyra was friends before we, we, before we started this journey. I knew Kyra before uh, we got on the show. We knew we were actually going to be on this season together. Um, and that's why I never talked to Kyra. I didn't talk to Kyra one time, uh, even in the beginning. I just said, you know, we already know each other. If we were going to date, we would have been dated before then. So, you know, I'm going to let you do your journey and you do my journey. And if, you know, you need anything, just reach out for me. So Kyra was off the board. Uh, Liz, um, beautiful, great woman. But, you know, she's waiting for marriage for uh, to be intimate, which I, I respect 100 percent. And I think he's disciplined for that. She could do something that, you know, I'm not willing to do. And I respect her so much that I was up front with her and said, you know, that's not the route I want to go. But I respect you for it. I'm not going to lead you on because of that. So I never really talked to Liz. Uh, Benicia is gorgeous. Uh, and so much fun, but you know, I do want to have kids in the future. And, um, you know, like she said, the kitchen is closed she didn't want kids. So those, you know, top girls were kind of off limits. The three that I broke down to were basically three women that said they wanted to have kids and that told me that they were open to a relationship. And basically that's what I broke it down to. Um, those are the choices I got. I had 10 girls, right? Two girls were gone just like that with Ida and uh, Andrea. So you really got eight women. Um, me and Tressa, Tressa's my queen. Shout out to Queen Tressa. I love the death. I had uh, just a great connection with her, but she's an empty nester. She, she, her daughter's almost 22, 20, you know what I mean? I'm gonna be out the house soon and Tressa don't need to be having no family and kids. Tressa needs to work on her business, what she wants to do, she wants to travel, she wants to see the world, things that I got a chance to do already. And I'm not gonna put her in that situation, but we talked about it. Like, you know what I mean? She's a great woman.